Hello and welcome to this interview with Juan. Um, I don't want to pronounce your name, um, your name wrong. What's sure, my last name is, is is pronounced Hidalgo. Hidalgo, great. That's okay. One of our artists presently on display at Alpha Art Gallery's current exhibition, Refracted Shade and Light. My name is Brianna, and together we will be going over some of Juan's artistic style, as well as the pieces that are, were graciously contributed to both our physical and online presentations. So we're going to start off um, pretty simple. Juan, how are you today? I'm doing good, thanks. I just I just got in from work. <laughs> oh. <laughs> nice. Okay, so I just want to ask you, um, could you explain what your artistic process is like? Um, so I'm a photographer. Um, I use... Uh, I still use film for, for a lot of my work. Uh, I predominantly use a, a large format four by five field camera. So it's not as if I can just like snap away. It's one image at a time. It's very slow, tedious, but I found that for my practice and the things that I'm interested in, um, which are primarily working class communities of color, very similar to my own. I, I, uh, I was raised in Patterson, New Jersey after I moved here uh, as a child from Colombia. And for me, what I'm interested in is, uh, like I said earlier, you know, working class people of color and wearing working class people as well, just like sort of just throw that out there as well. Um, and what I'm interested in is the fact that, or I shouldn't say the fact that, but I think that everybody deserves to have a good image of their likeness, regardless of their socioeconomic uh, status in this country. And everybody, you know, I think is entitled to that. And so my approach is to always um, have some sort of empathy with my subject matter. Um, we also take into consideration that um, well, the three things I would say that I, I, I always keep in mind when I'm making um, a portrait of somebody or even when I'm making a still life or even if I'm doing something that's a little bit uh, not normal for me, like landscape photography or, or, or urban scape photography, is uh, I keep these three things in mind is dignity, um, allegory, and what's the third one that I really think about so much? Dignity, allegory, um, and uh, verisimilitude, right? So verisimilitude, just, it's kind of like a sense of the truth. You know, it's not like this absolute truth or like this, like, so it's like, it, because like everybody's experiences are different. And I think that growing up in Patterson, New Jersey um, has really shaped my visual language of the things that I'm interested in, as well as like my politics around that, around those things. Um, so that's kind of a like long winded answer on like what my practice is kind of about, but all the, I, I find that these things are important and, mm -hmm. and they, you know, they, they kind of, they fuel the things that I make. Right. Definitely. It's like still a part of you and your, your photographs are so beautiful too, by the Thank way. You. Thank um, you okay. Much. So for my second question, um, the image of your father sitting on the couch with his hand on his chest and the image of your mother in what appears to be the kitchen. Um, mm -hmm. Those are the, um, the only two photographs um, in which both of your parents are staring directly at the viewers. Can you describe the thought process behind this? Um, I mean, I, 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 I make a lot of images of my family. Um, it's an ongoing body of work. It's titled East 17th Street. Um, but I mean, I have other images where my my parents are looking directly at the camera. Um, but I I think about Edward Hopper a lot too sometimes when I'm making my work. Mm -hmm. And a lot of Edward Hopper's work is just sort of this, um, you know, you're, as a photographer, you're a viewer of this person, just um, them going about their day. Um, and it's a lot of, Nego I don't want to say negotiating with my parents because there's really no negotiation in terms of uh, what I'd like to, to, to do with them. Um, but it's, I, I would say for every 
you know, one image I make of my parents where they're like staring at the camera, there's probably like two or three where they're looking off somewhere else in the distance. And um, I think part of that is that I know how to make a good like frontal, you know, forward facing portrait, you know, my family or, you know, like the people I encounter, but I'm a visual artist too, right? And, you know, part, I think people sometimes forget that when you have a camera in hand, that it's just like, you, you bring it, you point it at something or someone and you make a picture. And I imply like the same sort of um, techniques that the, the, the painter would use, that an illustrator would use, like, they're not always gonna draw somebody like in, you know, like in a frontal way or paint somebody in a frontal mm -hmm. way. And so I think part of it is how do I, um navigate all these portraits that i've made of my parents over the years and i think a lot of the times it's depending a lot of it too depends on just like the quality of light that's coming in on that in like any mm -hmm. given moment um mm -hmm. and i think it's just really part of that is like you know their, their apartment isn't that big but the light that just comes in through the windows at any given time of the year well i shouldn't say any given time of the year but at different times of the year call for at least when i see it like in the winter i probably do maybe some more more so like front facing portraits mm -hmm. of my parents and maybe when it's like spring and summertime um it's more so oh let's the lights bouncing this way and that way and like oh mom do me a favor just like look this way and another thing is i'd, I'd like to say that like a, a friend and, and colleague of mine pointed out is that my dad's a very uh, aware of himself even with or without the camera in front of him. And it kind of comes across in the imagery of makeup, my dad, whereas my mom, she's not very comfortable in front of the camera. But as her firstborn, um, <laughs> I navigate that well in terms of that it's, it's more of a negotiation, like, I guess like an emotional negotiation. I don't manipulate them in any ways like oh just do this for me or oh, maybe mm -hmm. it's like, I'm your firstborn but it's more <laughs> so it's more so um I think that my mom knows that it's it's part of it's a labor of love you know it's like this mm -hmm. is like I, this is what I just take my not I shouldn't say like the making of this work is like I stick my career on it but like I chose to become a photographer at 25 and I think that mm -hmm. um you know, got my BFA at 30 and a BFA uh, and an MFA at 37. So I think those things, like, I don't want to say play in my mom's mind, but I think that my, my mom understands what I do. Mm -hmm. She doesn't, and, and she, she, she probably is very, no, I shouldn't say she's probably, she's very self-conscious, but I just, I had the same way that I probably talked to anyone else that I photographed is like the same way I talked to my mom and dad and I especially my mom I just kind of ease her in I was like mom give me two minutes it's never two minutes but is it and then I just ease her into it and part of that is like okay for both of them it's like okay today you know I need you to look off camera in this direction or today it's like I need you to face me and I think like I said earlier um a lot of that has to do with with the quality of light and when I think about what times of the year I'm making images, it's pretty much from March all the way up into November, and then like December, January, February, um, the light's not great. So I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying that I don't make images in those in those um, months. It's just the light isn't like the greatest sometimes, and we're like, oh, like oh, all right. But sometimes you get lucky and you're like, oh, the light is fantastic today. So right, right. Yeah. Um, so I and I guess to like answer your question a little more directly, um, I think it's like I said earlier. It just really depends on the light and kind of depends on the conversation I've had with them, at, you know, in that moment, um, and a lot of it is pretty much predicated on the quality of light that's coming in at any given moment uh, throughout the year because I, it's, like I said, the, the camera I use is, is fairly large. 
and slow. So I might go over there, let's just say, for example, Friday, and now I'll see the lights coming in their living room window at a certain angle at a certain time, and I'll be and I'll make a mental note of that, or I'll write something down. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, 4 p.m. I know that the lights coming in off of the second window and hitting the sofa in a very particular direction, and then I'll look at my schedule. Not my schedule so much, but uh, like the what the weather is going to be like at any given time during the week mm -hmm. that I'm off and like. I'm coming here tomorrow, um, or I, I'll just say I'm coming over, but I'll have my equipment with me, and um, that's that's kind of the way that goes. It's, it's pretty much dependent on the light. And again, um, some of the work is influenced by looking at Edward Hopper paintings as well. Yes, I think that's so. It's so interesting. I think it's so beautiful. Like just finding the the right moment and getting it inspired. Like how you said, finding the light and even just like taking a note down like to write down like the whole process of like all that goes into it is so beautiful and even just like the personality that you like portray in your in your photographs is so beautiful I'm looking at um <laughs> looking at some of them right now hanging up <laughs> um which also um kind of helps me go into my next question um speaking of our personality and portraiture one of the things that I found so interesting um, about the work that you submitted was there were two photos that um, that weren't of your your parents. It was one um, of the image of your of the shoes and the socks, mm. and then the image with the rosary. And I thought it was both images were so beautiful because it was like these were personal, um, significant objects that were still showing just as much personality and character as your portraits. Um, so in a way, I kind of thought of them as portraits, even though they weren't like there were no figures in them. Um, could you go, or could you kind of describe uh, the process behind those two photos? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, the, the photo of the shoes, those are my dad's like orthopedic shoes. Uh, and, you know, just kind of just takes them off and kind of leaves them wherever and <laughs> and I, I if i recall correct i made that right before we went on lockdown back in 2020. oh wow and, yeah and so that was like you know maybe one of the last times i saw my parents in person before kind of felt that it was safe to come you know mm -hmm. for me to go see them again and it was early-ish morning, and the light was the light was really nice in their living room. And so I I, I think all I did was I, I took his shoes and I just moved them around um, because why not? It just mm -hmm. I'm not I'm not some I'm not a photojournalist, and I'm not some uh, you know want to say that like in a pejorative way and I'm not some sort of steadfast like uh documentary photographer who believes in just like fly on the wall mentality I don't it's like if it doesn't make <laughs> sense in the frame if mm -hmm. it doesn't make sense in the frame I'm not going I'd be like I'm gonna move stuff around it just it just makes sense to me um and so I just moved them around until I felt that the light was right and like adjusted the focus so it only part of the shoe and sock combo was in focus. Uh, so I was like, okay, and just adjusted it in a way. And and for me, a lot of the still lives that I that I find or you know rearrange are sometimes, or I shouldn't say sometimes. A lot of the times, I see them as uh, like stand-ins for that person or the or the people that um, I'm photographing, mm -hmm. and because. No, no, objects also tell a story, right? You know? Right. Mm -hmm. And for the the image of the rosary, those are my mom's hands, and that's her praying the rosary. But I basically just reenacted something I've seen her do many times over, and it was mm -hmm. one of those cases where I knew the light was coming in in her bedroom around eight nine o'clock, and it just the light just bounces around beautifully and. 
um, I, you know, I said, Mom, you know, let's just do this today. Uh, and you know, not that I'm a lapsed Catholic, but you know, my mom is a firm believer, and like I, you know, prayed the rosary with her, and um, I've always admired her like hands and the way that she counts the beads as she's praying the rosary when she's when I'm there with her and I had seen the image in my mind you know one of those instances and she saw me looking at her like I know what you're thinking <laughs> and I was like well you know what's coming and and so when the when the opportunity the light you know, was available or presented itself I was like okay mom I'm coming over tomorrow or not, I didn't even give him the warning. I just saw that I was like I was coming over, and <laughs> and so she she was ready. She was ready. You know, and I was like okay. And it was a there's a portrait of her with her head bowed and like a, like three quarter length and like her just praying the rosary. And then I said, just hold that pose for a minute while I like get in tighter to make this other portrait of your of your hands with the rosary. Um, and again, it's like I move things around as I see fit and you know, mm -hmm. like style that and um that's 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 kind of the way that, you know that 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 picture came about I love that I I definitely can resonate and relate to that I, as a painter myself I always paint my family so I'm like stop what you're doing and I'll like take a picture of them <laughs> and like <laughs> and then paint it and be so inspired by like whatever they're doing <laughs> Okay, so for my final question, um, can you describe the thought process behind um, the image when your mother and your father, um, they're both sitting on the couch and it's like, um, well, your mother's sitting on the couch and your father's mm -hmm. sitting nearby on the floor. Because mm -hmm. I think like the lighting in that is um, like a little different than the one that um, the other pieces in the show, which I think mm -hmm. is so interesting. So describe like the thought process. That, that image was made in the summer of 2016, and oh, wow. was, and probably the 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 film was processed late 2016, early 2017. I don't remember. Um, and I was going to make a different image, mm. kind of like straight on of them sitting on the sofa, but then I saw the, that's a reflection of them on their flat screen TV. Wow. It, and so I think the title is like mom and dad on the TV, right? Oh, it's wow. sort of uh, direct, but also maybe like abstract, you know, the titling of it. And because I, I, I really did have my camera pointed at them, but I hesitated for a minute and I just turned around and looked at their, their, their flat screen TV and I saw the reflection on this matte black surface and I go, that's not the image, that's the image right there. Oh my, wow. And so I, I think I just rotated the camera on the, on the tripod and maybe took a step back or something and I said, stay still. The image is right here. So don't do. And they were just kind of like napping, um, and I just did that. Just turned the camera around and because I was thinking, well, let me try something different. Mm -hmm. um, and it was just the difference was just me turning the camera around and and making this this image that's kind of on this just sea of black with you know maybe the at the bottom there's like a little triangle of like something that sort of gives it away but not really unless you you kind of look and i was like well, what is that type of thing mm -hmm. um that's and that's just the way that image happened was i wow. wanted to do something a little bit different than you know just just a straight on portrait of them wow that is amazing and i love it too because like it's capturing the both of them in the same space too. It's so beautiful. Sorry, I'm looking at it right now. <laughs> I keep like no, my no eyes worries. Keep going. <laughs> no worries, no right worries. 
Well, thank you so much. Um, I don't have any more questions, but if there's anything you would like to add or you would want like everybody to know or what you're working on now, please feel free to share. Sure. I I recently completed an artist residency in northern Michigan um, for this foundation at this foundation called Tucson Talk, which translates like from the Nordic to like a thousand thanks. Um, and while I was up there, I produced uh, 15 photo reviewers, an edition of like five prints a piece. Okay. And I spent, you know, a good part of the December into January just working on those. And it's about Patterson mm -hmm. where I where I where I was raised and where I grew up and I spent pretty much my childhood into adulthood there until like I left in you know the 2012 um and you know if there's any interest in that you know people can contact me and um talk about that and I can uh, share some of the images with you via email as well um and then I have a question for you so you said you paint your family Yes, I do. <laughs> is, it, is it figurative? Is, is it abstract? Who are some of your influences? Who are you looking at? Um, it is. It is figurative. Um, I am inspired to by like just representing what I know and representing people of color. Um, so that's why I'm like so amazed by your um, photographs because I can relate to it Thank so you. much. Um, I do oil paint. Um, and some of my inspirations are Harry James Marshall. Um, oh, that's good. he's um, one of my favorites too. He, like he's one. Like oh, I just side note. I used to when I lived in Chicago. I worked at the MCA for a little bit, mm -hmm. and so I, you know, as an art installer and handler and all the jazz and so. But I missed out working on his show by like a few months. But I got oh. to see. It. Oh my god, it was like. One of the most beautiful shows I've ever seen in my life. Wow! But uh, but anyway, sorry. Like I was like, that one is of amazing. These... <laughs> oh my gosh. Um. Yes, I love I love Harry James Marshall. Um. I love the work around the Harlem Renaissance. Um. That's what one of the things that really inspired me to start painting. Um. I I love a lot of figurative stuff. A lot of figurative painting, photographs. Um. <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty much it. But, <laughs> but thank you so much for speaking with us. This it was, was so pleasure. great. And thank you for sharing um, insight welcome. into all of your creations. Thank you. And yeah. I'm just looking forward to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you again. And, and, and um, hopefully I can get out there to like see the show at some point. Yes. Yes. That would be great. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye. Have a good one. You too. With the assistance of grants from organizations such as Amboy Bank, Magyar Bank, Johnson & Johnson, New Brunswick City Center, Middlesex County Cultural and Heritage Commission, Merck & Co., and the Bank of Princeton, Alpha Art is confident that all who come will leave with a greater appreciation of the arts and the gallery showcasing of a variety of artists.